Let's take a look at this integral, the integral of x squared plus 2 over x times x plus 2 times x minus 1. Since it's a rational function, we can use the method of partial fractions on it. And this, in this one, conveniently, the denominator has been factored. So we can write out, as usual, this fraction being, this integrand being equal to a over the first factor of the denominator plus b over the second factor plus c over the third factor. And if we clear the denominators by multiplying by x times x plus 2 times x minus 1 on both sides, we get x squared plus 2 equals a times x plus 2 x minus 1 plus b times x times x minus 1 plus c times x times x plus 2. And now, if you notice, if we let x equals 0, then we have the b, or the terms of b and c are going to cancel out because we have this x here and this x here. And so when we let x equals 0, we're going to have 0 plus 2 on the left equals a times 2 plus 2 times 2 minus 1. So 2 equals 4a a equals a half. And similarly, if we let x equal, say, mi minus 2, then the terms involving a and c are going to disappear from the right. And so we're going to have minus 2 squared, that's 4 plus 2 on the left, and then b times minus 2 times minus 3. So 6 equals minus 6b, b is minus 1. And finally, um, if we let x equals 1, the terms involving a and b would disappear. So let's let x equal 1, and then we have 1 plus 2 equals a and b go away, c times 1 times 3. And so that means 3 equals 3c, and so c equals 1. So what we can do is we can rewrite the original integral as a sort of a sum of three the sum of three integrals, each of which having only one linear term in the denominator. And so this is x squared plus two over x times x minus one times x plus two dx. That's equal to the integral a was the one associated with x. So this is one over two x dx plus b is the one associated with x over two. So that's minus 1 over x plus 2, sorry, dx. And finally, c is x minus 1. So this is going to be plus c is 1 over x minus 1 dx. And we can integrate all three of these pretty easily. The first one is 1 half times 1 over x. So it should just be 1 half natural log of x minus natural log of x plus 2. We can do a substitution of u equals x plus 2, but it's not hard to see that the antiderivative of 1 over x plus 2 is natural log of x plus 2. And similarly, this is natural log of x minus 1 plus c. And so this is the antiderivative of x squared plus 2 over x times x plus 2 times x minus 1.